Night two, the Great American Bash, week two, night two, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's the big one, isn't it? It's winner take all. It's NXT champion Adam Cole going up against NXT North American champion Keith Lee. Winner take all, the NXT championship, the NXT North American championship are both on the line. Now, obviously, everyone, I think most people now have seen the spoilers, right? Everyone's seen the spoilers. Everyone knows what happens. Uh, don't worry if you haven't, if you've been one of those fortunate people that hasn't seen the spoilers. Of course, we even did a video on the channel about it. Um, then I'm not going to go into spoilers here. I'm not going to say who wins, who doesn't win, etc, etc. It does kind of handcuff me a little bit. It means I can't do a prediction. I can't go into plans what I would do coming out of the match because obviously I know the outcome but for those who who don't want to know I'm not going to spoil it so you don't have to worry about this this video will be spoiler free um it's frustrating isn't it it's really frustrating about the spoilers because I feel like some people they haven't gone out their way to see the result and they've still been able to see it because it has been everywhere and it has been everywhere and that's not just the fault of the of you know channels like this it's not the fault of uh, wrestling news sites or websites or anything like that ultimately that's what happens when a talent spoils the result of the match six days prior to the event airing it's just an absolute madness or might even even they've spoiled it on the night of right so of last wednesday so seven days prior to the event airing it's just it, the more I think about it, I just don't get what was going through the guy's head. I really don't. It doesn't, to me, make any sense whatsoever why you would think that's the right thing to do. How? <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm always at a loss for words. How? Why? Why would you think that's a good thing? Why? Why would you do that? Of course, it's social media. You. I know he doesn't have a huge following, but he's on TV, and most of the people that follow you are obviously going to be wrestling fans. People that have seen you on TV, people that watch the product, people that watch NXT every single week. So why would you post a result on your Instagram story of a match that's going to air seven days later? It's just a complete madness. It's complete madness. I don't, I can't even understand the logic of what was going through his head apart from, and again, it almost makes you so angry that you sort of go, oh, you had to be the one to, you know, it's, it's the Instagram culture, isn't it? It's the social media culture. Look, I'm having a go because obviously we're we're talking now on YouTube and this is going to be posted on Instagram too and all of that stuff. But is, was it really that important to be the first to show people that, or was it really that important to get likes or to get clicks or you know to get attention on your Instagram story that you had to put the actual finish up of a match that they've been building to and the match that they've been hyping up and arguably. In my opinion, the biggest match in NXT history. I know that's probably quite a bold statement, but I still do think it's the biggest match in NXT history. You look at the stakes uh, that are there at the moment, it absolutely is the biggest um, match in NXT history. I just, the whole situation around the spoilers and why the talent would do that or think it was okay to do that, or I guess he wasn't thinking. I guess he just got the picture, put it straight on the uh, Instagram story right then and there. But even then, surely someone. Surely someone would get in his ear immediately. And go, what are you doing? You're like, what are you? Why? What are you doing? I'm surprised it was up for that long. And the thing is, with social media, once it's out, it's a document. Then you can't take it back. Especially on bigger and public accounts, you can have tweets or posts on Instagram or stories on Instagram or wherever that are up for 30 seconds, and it's already been viewed by, you know, 100, 200, 300 people, even more. So you have to be really careful and. It's just, it's very careless and it's and it's silly. It's just so silly and it's such a shame. Um, we can get into, will it hurt the viewing figures? Will it help the viewing figures? I, I don't know. I don't, again, I mentioned this last week. Some people have mentioned, oh, it's the Mick Foley scenario, right? From 1998. Mick Foley wins the WWE Championship on a taped episode of Raw. WCW Nitro is live at the time. They give away the result live on the air. They say Mick Foley's going to win their championship. He was formerly here as Cactus Jack. The quote, right, the famous quote, that'll put a lot of butts in seats. Well, actually, it did the opposite because everyone that was watching WCW at the time went, oh, there's going to be a title change on Raw? Wow. And they flipped over and uh, Raw did a big number and a big rating there. However, I don't think that applies here as much. And the reason I say that is because I think the reason it worked so well in 1998 for WWE was that people weren't expecting a title change. They just thought it was going to be something normal on Monday Night Raw because a WWE Championship doesn't change hands on Raw that often. So to hear that something that big was going to happen on Raw, it made people switch over. 
in this case, we knew going into it, right? We knew going in that either the NXT Championship or the NXT North American Championship is going to change hands. Either Adam Cole becomes a double champion or Keith Lee becomes a double champion. We already knew that the switch was going to happen. In this case, when the spoiler comes out, we know which way it's going to happen. It's not a case of you're going to end in a double DQ and they're both going to end up with their titles and nothing happens. We knew the switch was going to happen, so I don't think it totally applies. The whole 1998 scenario, I don't think that totally applies in this case to the winner-take-all match. But it possibly, possibly, because people know the outcome and because people know that the, the historic moment that is going to happen, maybe it does drive more viewers over uh, that weren't going to watch originally. Although I just don't think that's the case. I, do, I really don't think that's the case. I don't think that logic applies here. Um, the match itself, though, between Keith Lee and Adam Cole, it'll be great. Um, there's no doubt. Uh, Keith Lee is one of my favorite workers in NXT right now. Some of the things he's able to do is just completely mind-blowing, isn't it? For a man of his size... The way that he works and the agility that he has and just the stuff that he can pull off in the ring is absolutely, it's out of this world. And, you know, you don't have to say much about Adam Cole. Everyone knows the tremendous work he has, the matches that he has. He's got over 400 days as NXT champion, longest reigning NXT champion of all time. He really has carried this brand on his back for the last year, 18 months, ever since their move to the USA Network as well. That was a big step for the brand, regardless of your opinions on if it was counter-programming or anything of that like. He has done a tremendous job, I think, in carrying that brand. It's still, for me, too early whether to say NXT on USA is a success because, let's face it, they've lost uh, to AEW numerous times. It looks like the tide is turning slightly when it comes to those, and we'll get into that in a second. But I think Adam Tocco has done a tremendous job. It was a difficult position and a big task for him to carry the ship uh, and steady steady the ship, carry the brand. I'll get my metaphors there eventually. Um, and, and really carry the brand uh, in this uh, NXT versus AEW era on network television or cable television, I should say. So I think he's done a great job um, and his matches have just been phenomenal as well. So certainly the match will get time. I don't know how long it will get. I would speculate at least 30 minutes, including commercials. And I think the commercials is an important point to point out here as well. Um, obviously, last week we had limited commercials throughout the show, and we actually had a commercial-free main event between Sasha Banks and Io Shirai. That whole main event was completely commercial-free, which I think did help the rating or the number that they got for the main event. Uh, I don't know if that's the case this week. From what I've heard, I don't think it's limited commercials again. I might be wrong, um, and I don't think we're going to have a commercial-free main event again. I might be wrong. I haven't heard that. Um, if they did, if they have a commercial free main event this week on top of the stakes and the historical nature of the match, I think they'll do a tremendous, tremendous number uh, for the main event segment. But I'm not sure that's the case this time around. So we'll have to wait and see on that. It does make you think of NXT strategy, doesn't it? Or WWE strategy for these two weeks of the Great American Bash. Given that week one or night one was uh, commercial free, oh, well, the main event was commercial free and it had limited commercials throughout the show, it makes you wonder the thought process of, well, we might not win week one, so why don't we make sure that people stay tuned on week one by having the limited commercials and no commercials in the main event. Week two will probably definitely win because the match is so big, the stakes are so high, it's such a historic match, we don't necessarily need the limited commercials and the commercial free main event gimmicks because people are going to be watching anyway. Plus, as if it's a highly viewed show, um, they'll actually make quite a lot of money from the commercials anyway. So I think I think that makes the most sense. The whole limited commercials and commercial free element was to make sure that they beat AEW last week. And they did. So it worked. And I, and I think that uh, NXT will win again this week. Um, I think it, it, to me, it, it just seems very obvious that NXT will win this week. To me, NXT, the Great American Bash Night 2, it's the must-see show this week. Uh, it's got the biggest stakes. It's got the biggest moment, as I mentioned. It's, to me, the biggest match in NXT's history, uh, the me biggest main event in NXT's history. I know some people will say, well, that's not true. You know, barely Sasha Banks and etc. War Games, whatever. They had a match at WrestleMania this year. I still stand by that statement. I think this is the biggest match in NXT history. It's the biggest main event in NXT history. It's the first time we're ever going to see a double champion crowned. Um, someone's going to hold both bouts in the in the promotion, the NXT Championship and the NXT North American Championship. That's never been done before. It's it stakes, isn't it? It stakes. It's making the program must see. Now, some people are going to say, and I think this is an important point to mention as well, because it's a quote that Triple H made just yesterday. 
about the whole counter programming when it comes to NXT, the Great American Bash, and to Fighter Vest. Triple H, I believe he had an interview with Sports Illustrated, and he mentioned about the claims of counter programming, and he said, I don't counter book, I just book what's the best for NXT. And that's not an exact quote, but that's essentially what he said. Um, and I just laughed when I saw that. I just laughed and I rolled my eyes because it's just, that's just not true. <laughs> it's just not true. Um, I totally believe part of that sentence when he says I book what's best for NXT of course he does of course he books what's best for NXT and it's a way of thinking about it obviously having the great American bash to counter book AEW Fighter Fest is what's best for NXT because if these were just normal episodes of NXT your run-of-the-mill regular episodes of NXT the last two weeks they would have lost to Fighter Fest it's without a shadow of a doubt they would have lost to Fighter Fest because AEW was essentially putting on a pay-per-view spread over two weeks free on TV that is they that's why AEW would have won NXT the Great American Bash is counter programming it's exactly what it is again it comes down to my issue of we don't pay attention to NXT uh, to AEW they're not competition well of course they are of, of course they are and of course you're counter programming I'm not saying that's a bad thing or a good thing if anything I think it is best for N NXT they wouldn't have won the last couple of weeks if they didn't have the Great American Bash uh, but it is counter programming you didn't announce the Great American Bash to a week prior to Fighter Fest and the winner-take-all match was announced a week prior to that because you got caught cold. You went, whoa, AEW, they're doing Firefest spread over two weeks. They're doing a pay-per-view on free TV. We're going to get our asses kicked in the ratings. Uh, AEW are going to blow us out of the water unless we offer them something big. Let's bring back the Great American Bash. Let's spread it over two weeks just the same way that Fighter Fest is. This isn't a one-off. They spread it over two weeks exactly the same as the competition did. It was counter-programming. Again, I don't have a problem with it. That's business. You know, you've got to make money. You've got to make people watch your show. If you know your competition is doing something big, you need to do something bigger. That's how it worked in the Monday Night Wars. That's how it works right now in the Wednesday Night Wars. That's exactly how it is. I don't have a problem with that. Just be honest, Triple H. Don't say I'm not counter booking. I'm not counter programming. I'm just doing what's best for NXT. Half of that statement is true. You are doing what's best for NXT because you're ensuring that they win. But you are counter booking. That's exactly what you're doing. I don't I just I don't believe that. And I think that's an important point to make. Just keep living in that bubble. All right. Keep living in that bubble. That's that. That's fine. Um, now, in terms of the spoilers as well, there's been uh, a couple of uh, NXT. They're not even superstars. really. They're performance center recruits. People that haven't really even appeared on NXT TV yet. They might have been in the audience for this NXT Great American Bash Night 2 taping. They've speculated that or tried to hint at that there were multiple finishes taped for the Keith Lee versus Adam Cole match. Um, they even used the phrase that Taz used last week on Fire Fest when he said, we don't run a sloppy shop, which apparently really uh, angered some people in WWE, right? We don't run a sloppy shop. And they got really angry about that because AEW <laughs> had the nerve to criticize their testing policies, uh, policies and procedures, even though they only started testing three weeks ago, four months into a pandemic. But heaven forbid uh, AEW take a shot at them, right? Give me a break. Um, so this NXT Performance Center recruit uh, says, that, oh, the multiple finishes, we don't run a sloppy shop, you're just your marks. Uh, I think that's BS as well. Uh, I don't think that's true. I think that, that he's just trying to save face for the brand there. I don't know why he's doing it. For some reason, he might think he gets brownie points for helping save face for the brand. I don't think they take multiple finishes. If you've seen the picture of the spoiler that's out there for the outcome of this finish, there are streamers, confetti, all of that stuff everywhere. So I don't know if they really could be bothered, <laughs> quite frankly, or have the time to shoot that exactly again, reset and do a separate finish. I just I just don't think that's the case. I, I really don't think that's the case. I think that's them trying to play devil's advocate, trying to save face uh, and trying to, I don't know, keep people guessing. But it's just it doesn't work there. We know the outcome of the match and uh, it's pretty obvious what it's going to be. In terms of the rest of the card for NXT, uh, the Great American Bash Night 2, which I will get into, um, the rest of the card is fine, um, but the match, obviously, the, the winner-take-all match is the selling point of the show. It is the reason that people are going to tune in. It's the match that people are talking about, regardless of the spoiler or not. Um, so in terms of NXT versus AEW, 
Um, I think NXT wins again, and I think they win pretty comfortably this week, which would make NXT win uh, winning streak last for the three weeks now, be the third week in a row which they would beat uh, AEW. I have no doubts that I think NXT will win this week. I'd be very, very surprised if AEW won this week, just because... Um, Look, the AEW Fight Fest Night 2 card is great, but if you weigh it up against each other and look at the stakes, which is more must-see, which has the bigger news coming out of it, it's the NXT Great American Bash Night 2. It's just that winner-take-all match. It's the biggest match in NXT's history versus Chris Jericho versus Orange Cassidy, which is going to be the main event. That's that's what it is. That's what it is. You look at last week's main event, it got 900,000 viewers, Sasha Banks versus Io Shirai to 645,000 viewers of Omega and Page versus the Best Friends, and I don't think it will be much different this week. Now, arguably, AEW's main event for Fighter Fest Night 2 is stronger, obviously, in having Chris Jericho competing against Orange Cassidy. I think it's stronger just in the sense, look, Chris Jericho is the biggest draw that AEW have got. It's without a shadow of a doubt. He's the one that, that moves the needle uh, for AEW there. So maybe having Jericho in the main event of Fighter Fest might help them. I just don't think it'll be enough to overcome uh, such a big match in NXT's history. Arguably the biggest match in NXT's history where we'll see the first double champion, the NXT champion, and the North American crowned on one superstar for the first time. So I think NXT wins uh, this week again. Really excited for the main event, regardless that I know the outcome. Uh, I think it'll be a great match anyway, and uh, I'll be watching. I'll be watching, so uh, it will be certainly interesting to say the least. Of course, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on the main event, the winner-take-all match between Keith Lee and Adam Cole tonight on night? two of the great american bash which show will you be watching nxt or AEW? let me know your thoughts in the comment section below don't forget to like share and subscribe to wrestle news 365 you can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms on the screen right now that's at 365 wrestle on twitter and at wrestle news 365 on facebook and instagram thank you very much for watching listening streaming or however you come across this video today and i'll speak to you again very very soon enjoy nxt great american bash or fight fest whichever one you watch i'll speak to you again soon guys Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.